a time when things are shifting. We're gonna, there can be a new world order out there. And we've got to lead it. The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. What's up, guys? This is End Time Headlines, and it is Tuesday, May 17th. And I want to welcome all of our viewers at this time, those who are watching live or by the rebroadcast of this, whether you're watching by Facebook, whether you're watching by uh, po the podcast or perhaps Rumble or YouTube, or maybe you're listening by uh, Apple Podcasts or by Spotify. So we again, I'm Ricky Scaparro, the founder of The Pastor and the voice of End Time Headlines. And today we've got an interesting a topic that I want to discuss today. And I want to let you know right up front, many times we put scriptures up but this time I, I didn't, I'm not going to pull all these scriptures up because there is a lot of scripture and it would take a lot of time to do all that. Maybe, maybe when we do the final cut of this, when we put it on our video platforms like YouTube or rumble or on the podcast uh, visual, we'll have these up there, but I'll read these slowly on the scripture references so that you guys that are taking notes uh, will be able to, to keep track of this. But I want to talk to you for the next few moments about Ancient warnings to a modern generation, ancient warnings that were given that I believe are an alarm to a modern generation. That would be us. So things that were done and said in past, I believe, are warnings to the next generations. Second Peter chapter 3 verses one and nine. I'm going to be reading from the new King James version. This is second Peter chapter three, verses one through nine. Again, uh, if you're new to the broadcast, this is your first time joining us. Please let us know in the comment section below, whatever platform you're listening or watching from that you are new and where you guys are joining us from. Cause I always appreciate that to know that and to be able to see where you guys are joining us from. Again, this is second Peter three, one through nine beloved. I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words. Somebody say words, because this is important, which were spoken. Somebody say spoken. So we have words spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us. So what, I want to show you this here. You have right here in 2 Peter 3, Peter references, he says, I'm, I want to stir you up in the way of remembrance by the words which were spoken. And he says, mindful of the words which were spoken and of the commandment. So there is a, there is oral warnings and there is written warnings. And this is going to be the foundation of this entire segment today. So again, I'm, I'm going to drive this into your, into your heart today. Listen, this is not a prophetic update today, guys. This, we're not going over headlines today. We're just doing a teaching today. This is an equipping teaching today. We're changing. We're, we're shifting gears here today. So oral warnings and written warnings. Now look at this. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers have fallen asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water. Verse 6, by which the world that then, past tense, existed, perished. 
being flooded with water. It's important that you under, that you remember this. The world that then existed that Peter was referencing to, he was referencing to the account of Noah. The earth was destroyed by a body of water or a great deluge, or it was flooded. Verse 7, this is 2 Peter 3, 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now present tense, preserved by the same word, this is the written warning, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So notice Peter here references a judgment of the past, which was of water. And he references a judgment that is to come, future tense, and it will be a judgment of fire. Again, of water and of fire. Look, listen to what he says. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that which the do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Verse nine: The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now let's let's have a discussion about this for a moment. So here we see Peter is speaking to his audience and he's telling them. And I, look, I can't tell you word for word everything that was said, but if I believe that if we were there and we were present and we were among and those who Peter was having this discussion with and talking to, I know it's a written letter, but I'm telling you, they had oral discussions and written discussions about past, present, and future events. I'm pretty sure that what inspired Peter to write this, to give this exhortation, to give this warning, was the fact that just like in our lifetime, just like in 2022, you've got a lot of believers, and not just believers, but you've got skeptics, you've got scoffers that look at believers. They look at preachers. They look at what churches are preaching, especially the watchmen. And they hear the warnings going out, the oral warnings and the written warnings. And they say things like, I've heard this my whole life. My grandparents preached this. My mother teach this or taught this rather. My father taught this. I heard that old preacher teach this. This has been going on for years. I've heard this for decades. I've heard this for generation after generation. And we're still here. And God still hasn't brought the great tribulation. The rapture has not happened. The events that they have foretold has not happened. And therefore, what happens is they become discontent, they become discouraged, they become disappointed, and they allow the seeds of doubt to come into their heart, and they begin to open their mouth, and they begin to say things like, where is the promise of his coming? But notice Peter says, when they say this, they willfully forget Oh, you didn't hear me. I said they willfully forget that the earth that now is once was covered by a body of water that was a great judgment that wiped out everything with the breath of life in its nostrils and God started over clean. And he says this same heaven and earth is being preserved today for a renovation of fire that is to come in the future. And then he, it's interesting because then he says, 
we must remember that a thousand years is likened unto a day and a day as into a thousand years. In other words, just because we've not seen this fulfilled in our lifetime or it hasn't come in our timeline or when we expected it, it doesn't mean that God, come on, has forgotten that God has overlooked the abominations and the sins and the wickedness as it were in the days of Noah's time in the first judgment. That's why he had to emphasize at the end of his uh of this passage in second Peter three, one, nine, he says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some count slackness, but he's long suffering and wills that none perish. Come on. Some of y'all better be thankful that God hasn't split that Eastern sky yet. You better be thankful that we're still here today because you come on, you got family members. I've got family members and we both know that if God, that if the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, right now if he comes back today if he comes back on may 17th today come on we've got a lot of folks that ain't going on the first load and i thank god that he's long suffering i had family members that lived a lot longer than i thought they probably should have lived because they were wicked and they were vile but God spoke to me, he says, son, I'm long suffering and I will that none perish. I said, none, even the guy, come on, that you don't get along with the guy that hurts you, the, the, come on, the lady that betrayed you, the person that walked out on you, the person that divorced you, the person that hurt you, the person that betrayed you, even those people, God is long suffering and will and wills that they don't perish. But I got to move on. According to historical accounts, and I love, listen, I am a history buff only, listen to me, only when it comes to things that interest me. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. If I don't have any interest in it and you try to tell me history on something I have no interest in, I'm going to be, it's going to sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. And all I'm going to hear is wah, 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 and I'm going to be asleep in 10 minutes. But when it comes to biblical accounts and events, I love historical accounts because I can go and read historical accounts on, on events that are mentioned in the Bible, and it gives me deeper layers of understanding and revelation. For example, Josephus, the historian who was alive and was an eyewitness to the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. In his writings, there is a lot of revelation about events that surround things that we read about in the New Testament, for example. And even he gives you even knowledge because Josephus had access to historical books that I'm going to discuss here in just a second. Josephus, according to his writings, revealed that God imparted, listen to me, to Adam a revelation that earth would be destroyed twice. Hear me out. Once by a volume of water and later by a violence of fire. Now, again, Peter, according to the, what Peter wrote, it does not contradict Josephus. Because, listen, I, I get the emails, I get the messages. Just this past weekend, I had someone come to me and they asked me, what do you think about some of these books, like the book of Jasher and the book of Enoch and some of the writings of Josephus. And I tell them, I would not hold them on the same level of the Canaan of scripture of the 66 books of the Old and New Testament. Are you hearing me? But as long as what is written does not contradict the written word of Canaan of scripture, then I have no problem with studying those things. And this is an example. According to Josephus, Adam related these warnings. Are you hearing me? This information to his son, Seth, who in turn passed this, these warnings on to his sons. One of them is 
Enoch. In fact, according to history, this revelation was so important that Seth's sons recorded the message in brick and in stone. So watch this. There was oral warnings and there was written warnings. According to Josephus, he wrote this and passed it to, again, his sons, of the sons of Seth. Now, and then, according to another historical book called the Book of Jasher, by the way, this book, the Book of Jasher, because people will drill me on this, I'll just have you know that the book of Jasher is mentioned in your Bible in Joshua 10, 13 and 2 Samuel 1, 18. Now, again, if God did not want the readers of the Bible to reference these historical books, wouldn't you think that he would have not allowed them to be referenced to begin with? Hello. Thus, Joshua 10:13. Let me let me let me read this in this reference to book of Joshua. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the people had revenge upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for an an entire day. That's referenced in Joshua 10, 13. The book of Jasher is clearly referenced. 2 Samuel 1, 18. And he told them to teach the children of Judah the song of the bow. Indeed, it is written in the book of Jasher. That is 2 Samuel 1, 18. Now, having said that, I want to read to you what what is written in the book of Jasher, chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, in reference to uh, these warnings that were given in ancient history. Ready? Quote, And Canaan knew by his wisdom that God would destroy the sons of men for having sinned upon the earth and that the Lord would in the latter days bring upon them the waters of the flood. Wow. And in those days, Canaan wrote upon tablets of stone what was to take place in time to come, and he put them in his treasuries. So here we have, again, where did Josephus get this knowledge that these warnings were being given to generations to come and they were engraved in stone stones and tablets again he is referencing an ancient jewish book called the book of jasher now why why was why was this done listen quote according to again these writings the reason given for engraving these warnings upon two monuments, brick and stone, was that if one was destroyed by water, the other would survive. And it's interesting that 1900 years after this event, Josephus informed his readers that in his day, when he wrote this in the Antiquities of the Jews, that these monuments were inscribed with this revelation on them and they existed in Josephus' time. And he even tells you that they were in the land of Syriad. In his day, they still existed. Now, again, let's recap real quick before we go on. So we know that there was a revelation that God gave to Adam. Once sin was manifest in the garden through the fall of Adam and Eve, God, and then as time progressed, you had Cain that killed Abel, and things kept getting worse. You had Genesis chapter 6, which was the B'nai Elohim, the sons of God, 
these angelic, these angels that rebelled against God and they fell with Lucifer and they went into the daughters of men and they produced demigods in the earth. They produce these, the Nephilims, the giants. And by the time we get to Genesis 1 and we get to Genesis 6, God is so grieved by what is happening that before we even get to the fullness of Genesis 6, according to the book of Jasher, according to other historical writings such as the the knowledge given into Josephus that God spoke to Adam and revealed to him that there would come two judgments. One would be a, of a body of water that would destroy the earth. And we know when we get to Genesis six, when the Nephilim are overpopulating the earth and they're, and, 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 and mankind is corrupted with evil and wickedness and violence and corruption. Read it. It says that God was grieved with mankind and he had repented for creating them. And he says, I will wipe them out. I will destroy them and start over. And he looked in the earth and he saw, again, from Genesis 1 all the way up to Genesis 6, there was generations after generation. And he gets to Noah. But before he gets to Noah, I want to stop there and put a, I want to put a stake there and I want to go back. Before we get to Noah, we discover that Enoch, who walked with God and was righteous and was not and was taken. The Bible says he was taken to heaven, never saw physical death at the age of 65. And there he received a series of heavenly mysteries that he wrote allegedly, I will say allegedly, in the books of First and Second Enoch, listen to me, which, by the way, is referenced in the book of Jude, which is in your Bible in the New Testament. It's the, it's the small book, has one chapter, and it's before you get to the book of Revelation. Jude mentions in his writings, he references Enoch and the prophecy of Enoch referring to the coming of the Lord. So again, I propose to you, if God did not want us all the way in 2022, referencing these books, then don't you think he would have not included them in the New Testament and the Old Testament and the Canaan of Scripture? After all, does it not say that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God? All Scripture, not Pick and choose what I want, what you want, what I choose, what you do. No, all scripture. It's not a buffet. You can't, I'll leave this and take this, or I'll take this and I'll leave that. You can't do that. You have to have it all, right? So the warning was circulating orally. It was a, it, there was a revelation that was given to Adam and Adam, come on, the, the oral warning came from God himself who spoke. And by the way, the Bible says that God walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the garden. He communicated with them. He had discussions with them. He had dialogues with them. Go read Genesis 19. Abraham was called a friend of God, and he had a relationship and a covenant with God. And God said in Genesis 19, he said, shall I not reveal this to Abraham? Shall, is there anything I should hide from him? Because I have a covenant with him. He's in covenant with me. We're in a relationship. He was righteous before God's eyes. So watch this. God revealed to Abraham 
what he was about to do. How did he reveal it to Abraham? By word of mouth, orally. There was an oral warning given to Abraham. And he, what did he tell him? I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And thus, Abraham began to intercede right? Is that not what your Bible says? Lord, if I can find 50 righteous, will you spare it? 40, 30, 20, they go all the way down. And the only thing they can find is Lot, Lot's wife, his daughters and sons-in-laws. And even most of them didn't even make it out. So here we are, rewind, go all the way back. Before that, God is speaking to Adam by direct revelation Come on, through prayer, through communication. And he tells Adam, the earth is becoming corrupt. It's becoming wicked. I'm going to destroy the earth of a flood. So thus, Adam passed the warnings down to his seed and their seed. And watch this. Not only was there a oral warning given, but they begin to inscribe the warnings on stones and bricks. So you had two accounts. You had one of oral and one of written. Now look at this. And you say, well, what's it got to do with us? I'm glad you asked because we're going there. Because you see, when you go to well, I don't want to get ahead of this. We're going to get to this in just a second. Let me, let me go down here. Amos, let's talk about the two warnings in past that are the same in the future. Because see, God doesn't deviate from, listen, God operates in seasons, in cycles, in patterns, in types and shadows. And in parallels, that which was is that which shall be. You, Anybody who's followed our ministry, you should know this, but you should be an expert at this and be quoting this as much as we talk about this. So this gives me great comfort to know that, God, listen, God is not going to blindside humanity with something that has not occurred in the past in some type of type and shadow or pattern. Are you, are you listening to me? So watch this. Just as there was oral warnings and written warnings for previous generations of what was to come, it is suffice to say that, in, that today there is yet again oral warnings going out and written warnings going out to a modern generation. And just as, listen to me, just as in times past, they turned their ears away. They laughed at Noah. They scoffed him. They mocked him. They ridiculed him. It suffice to say that you and I will receive the same response. Watch this, oral warnings, Amos 3, 7. If you're listening, taking notes, that's Amos 3, 7. I want to read this really slow and really clear. Quote, surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servant, the prophets. Listen to me. I know there's entire movements out there that want to tell you that there is no modern prophets in the earth today. But the problem with that is the Holy Spirit is still here and he's still using people today. And the Bible says that when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will not speak of his own accord, but he shall reveal the will of the father to the believer. And he will show us, listen to me, things to come. That's future tense. Listen, the Holy Spirit did not cease and die in his 
function or operation in the fourth century with the last apostle. The apostles of the fourth century died, correct, but the Holy Spirit who was working through them and manifesting the gifts and their callings is still alive. He's not dead. He didn't cease and he didn't go back to heaven and he's still moving in the earth today and he's still, and he's still speaking through men, women, sons, and daughters today. Joel 2 even says, Joel 2, 28 through 30 says that God will even more so speak through sons and daughters in these last days as he has poured out his spirit upon all flesh. And ready for this and they will prophesy they will dream dreams and they will have visions personally any preacher teacher apostle prophet an evangelist whatever any one of them tries to convince me tell me teach me or persuade me that god is done with the operation of the gifts of the spirit the power of the spirit and working through men and women of god today to do the miraculous i run from them i don't walk away from them i run from them the apostle paul said in the last days men will have a form of godliness Oh, they're going to look like, they're going to talk like Christians. They're going to walk like a Christian. They're going to act like a Christian. They're going to do all the Christian things. They may have a mega church. They may have a small church. They may be on Christian television. They may not be. They may be an author of a book. They may not be. They may have a huge following on social media. They may not have. They may have great influence or little influence. But he says this, they will have a form of godliness. They may be named as a Christian, a Christian author, a Christian speaker, an evangelist, a title, a prophet, or whatever it is. But he says they'll have a form of godliness, but they will deny the very power of the Holy Spirit. And what does the Apostle Paul tell us to do? He says, from such turn away. Listen, some of y'all, I'm going to go, I'm going to take a rabbit trail right here. The reason why some of y'all can't get breakthrough in certain areas of your life and you can't get deliverance and you can't get breakthrough and you can't get an answer to prayer is because probably because you have been listening to a bunch of preachers and teachers they don't even believe in miracles today. They don't believe you can get healed today. They don't believe you can get delivered today. Listen, we posted the other day about demonic exorcisms and in the thread of that on Facebook, I was shocked by the amount of quote unquote professed believers that don't even believe in A, demons or B, they don't even believe that we have the authority to cast them out. And y'all think I'm making up these polls and these stats and, and everything, telling you that the falling away, the apostasia that Paul warned about to the church of Thessalonica is, is here. And people like, they cover their ears and they say, no, it's not. It's this. Are you kidding me? Even, listen, the Bible says that even the demons tremble and believe. And we can't get believers to believe. Devils believe in an eternal hellfire, but we got a lot of believers that think that hell is a myth. And they don't even believe in the reality of hell. They don't teach it. They don't believe it. They don't speak the urgency of it. Come on, wake up. If you're sitting beside somebody right now in your office or, or in your car, or whatever, just grab them and shake them and say, wake up, man. It's time for us to wake up. The oral warnings are going out. The Holy Spirit is speaking through the church today. And you know who he wants to speak through? Look in the mirror, friend. He's speaking through you. He's speaking through me. He's, he wants to open your mouth and come on and fill your mouth with the word of God. But here's the problem. I remember a preacher one time said that, 
It's like a well with a bucket going into the well. And if there's nothing in the bottom of the well, when the bucket goes down into the well and it comes out of the well, it'll be an empty bucket with a bunch of cobwebs on it. What am I talking about? I'm trying to say, listen, you can't give, you can't warn people if you ain't got nothing in the well. You got to fill yourself with the word of God. And when you fill yourself with the word of God and you fill yourself with his presence, then the Bible says that when the day comes and you're put on trial or you're in a circumstance, you don't have to fear of what you shall speak or what you shall say, for it will not be you speaking. Hello. It will be the Holy Spirit speaking through you. Listen, but it's imperative that we fill ourselves up with the word of God, because if we don't, we're just opening our mouths and giving people vain philosophies and fables and nonsense. But what would happen if those who hunger and thirst after righteousness were filled with his word? I'm going to tell you what would happen. You would become like Jeremiah who said it was like a fire that was shut up in my bones and I could not contain it. I could not remain still. I could not remain silent. When I'm seeing the world going to hell in a handbasket, I'm seeing debauchery. I'm seeing abominations. I'm seeing wickedness. I'm seeing sin abounding. I'm seeing the love of many growing cold. I'm seeing the church falling away. I'm seeing preachers fall away. I'm seeing all these things fall away. Listen, if you're filled with his presence, you're filled with his love, you're filled with his word, and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you can't remain silent. It will be a fire shut up in your bones, and you will have to open your mouth wide and declare what thus saith the Lord says. I'm trying to tell you today, listen, I'm not telling you you should put a title on your name as a prophet or a prophetess, but I am telling you today, that God speaks through his children today. He speaks, and yes, he speaks through men and he speaks through women. Come on, and he speaks to our children. Listen, I've got a 14-year-old that I know for a fact because I've trained him up in the way he should go. And I've taught him to listen to the voice of God. When God speaks through a dream, when God speaks through a vision, when God speaks through a circumstances, when he speaks through circumstances and he knows and discerns these things. And you know what? God speaks through my children and he'll speak through yours too. If you'll give them a chance, give them room to hear the word of God and, and, and be led by the spirit of God. Come on, the word says, my sheep know my voice. Do you know the voice of God today? Wow, you know what, brother? I, all I need is the word. I'm not discrediting the word. And we're going to get to the written, the written warnings in just a minute. I'm not discrediting the word. because. But listen, there's going to be circumstances in your life where the word of God, the Bible is not black and white on it. You're not, listen, you're, when it comes to relationships, you better know how to hear the spirit of God, whether that person is a snake or whether they're legit, you better know the spirit of God. The spirit of God will warn you of things to come. He'll tell you, take the job. Don't take the job. Move to that city. Don't move to that city. Get in a relationship with them, run from them. Should I go down this way or should I go here? Should I go left or should, should I go right? You'll get in the word of God and it may not be black and white in those areas, but I'm going to tell you, listen, you can get in your prayer closet. You can begin to cry out to God. You can begin to seek the Lord. You can begin to pray. Come on. you. Jude says, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because Romans chapter 8 says, when we know not what we ought to pray, the Spirit helps us in our infirmities. And it says, he who knows the mind of God and searches the heart of God, we will reveal unto you the will of God. 
And it says that you, we, we groan in utterances. Why? What is he talking about right there? What is Paul alluding to right there? He's talking about praying in the Holy Ghost. You sound like a Pentecostal. No, listen, stop labeling me. Stop putting titles on me. What I am is an individual who's read the Bible and I want to be obedient to the Bible and the word of God. So number one, there's oral warnings and God is still speaking through the Holy Spirit today. And just like in times of old, God would speak to those that were obedient and those that were willing and those that would listen and obey. And it just so happens, God spoke to Noah in his day and says, Noah, I, you have found grace in my sight. You are righteous in your day. And I know that you will listen and obey. And what did God do? God entrusted Noah with the warning of the Lord on his lips. Are you listening to me? On his lips. So Noah, for 100, 200 years, whatever it is, he opened his mouth and he spoke. Thus saith the Lord, repent for the kingdom is near. Repent for judgment is coming. And listen to me. Noah was only repeating orally what was already engraved in stones, written. So can I tell you this? Everything that we are warning people today of what's coming has already been written and engraved in the word of God. And that leads me to the next part. And that is written warnings. The New Testament alone contains 318 references to the return of Christ. It's amazing. 318 references in the New Testament on the return of Christ, and we can't get half the preachers and pastors out there that even touch on the subject. But yet there's 318 references to it. The Ten generations after Adam had recorded in brick and stone the warnings there was no major written, listen to me, revelation of God's word. And after 6,000 years of human history, we are now blessed today to have the complete revelation of God in the 66 books of the Canaan of Scripture. So listen, we have the Holy Spirit who speaks today, but we have the written word of God. And that leads me to my next point. God is not going to speak. His voice is not going to contradict the written word of God. This is why all the, I see all this nonsense all the time where these people get up and they say, God spoke to me this, and God told me that, and God said this, and it's contradictory to the written word of God. And I'm like, no, nope, God didn't speak, speak that. Holy Spirit didn't speak that. That was your flesh, or it was Satan deceiving you. Oh, I'm going to preach it louder. Somebody's listening out there. Now, let me, let, me, let me read to you what the Apostle Paul said to the church of Corinth. Ready? Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers, what, look at this, he's speaking past tense, right? <clears throat> all of our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food, <clears throat> excuse me, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now listen to this, verse 6. Now these things, what things? What I just read to you, past tense. These things became our present tense examples. To the intent that we, present tense, should not lust after evil things as they also lusted and do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. 
nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 24 hours, 23,000 people die. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Verse 11, 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the end of the ages have come. Wow. So again, what are we talking about? Ancient warnings to a modern generation. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Let me say, listen, hear this, my friend. If God is the Lord God who changes not, then you know what? His word does not change. Therefore, I don't care if society deems it offensive or divisive or homophobic or transphobic or irrelevant or archaic or out of date. If God says it's an abomination and he said it was an abomination in times past, it's an abomination in times present. If he says it was a sin in times past, I can tell you, friend, that it's a sin in times present. If he said that these things would result in the decimation and destruction and judgment of nations in times past, then, my friend, it is the same today. Luke 17, 26 through 30. And as it was in the days of Noah, I'm telling you, you, should, you guys should have this memorized by now. As it was in the days of Noah, so will also be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until that day or until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, now you say, well, why are you preaching to us this again? Because now you have a greater understanding. It wasn't just some crazy guy out there in the field building a huge boat, shouting everybody that a flood was coming. No, it was much deeper than that. The people that were there, listen to me, before Noah ever opened his mouth and began to warn them that judgment was coming, they for years and years and years and generation and generation, there had already been circulated oral warnings and written warnings on tablets and stone that the earth is going to be destroyed in the future by a deluge of flood, and then it will be destroyed by fire. So those people, and can I prove it to you? The word of God says that God does nothing, again, lest he first reveal it, reveal it through his prophets, his, or his servants, his prophets. One, number two, by the testimony of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. So when Noah rose up and began to preach to the people that judgment was coming, that a flood was coming, they had already been warned previously. And come on, through stones, through the written warning, and now Noah was coming confirming with the oral warnings. Whew. Look at this. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Noah and Lot, and, and it, watch this, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Listen to me, friends. When the day comes that the Son of Man is revealed, when the day comes that he splits the eastern sky, when the day comes and the trumpet will sound, listen to me, there will be a generation that is alive and well, and they will be without excuse. 
They would have heard the oral warning and the written warnings that have circulated. Now, I'm just going to say, and I believe in another prophetic, I'm just going to add to this. I believe just as in the days of Noah and Lot, I believe we're going to see an increase of natural disasters that are going to correlate with the days of Noah and Lot. Let me explain. In the days of Noah, what, what did it say? The earth was destroyed by what? Water. But we know that God put a rainbow. He created the rainbow. Half of it is in heaven. You can read that in the book of Revelation. John saw it. And the other half we see on earth. Why did he do that? So it was a covenant that he made with the earth that he would never destroy the earth again by a complete deluge of water. But it doesn't mean that there will not be future judgments that will, regard, that will involve water. So historic flooding, typhoons, cyclones, and hurricanes. And listen, I don't have time to go into that, but I could talk a whole hour on just that and give you examples of the past. And I believe there were absolute judgment on that. Then you've got the days of fire, the days of Lot. How was Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed? fire and brimstone and peter says that the next global renovation the global judgment will be a purging of fire so no wonder we continually see these historic wildfires volcanic eruptions and even i would say wars and and desolations that happen involving weapons of mass destruction because again it produces fire now I'm going to read to you 2 Peter 2, 4, and 9, and we're going to close and pray for some people. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them in chains of darkness, but to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Notice he referenced Days of Noah, days of Lot, water judgment, fire judgment. Watch this. Condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward, that's us, guys, live ungodly and delivered righteous Lot, telling us that there's, we'll all be, Noah was righteous in his family, Lot was righteous, and, and there was a remnant of his family. There's always a remnant that God spares. Listen to this. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct, conduct of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord, oh, come on. You need to, you need to underline this scripture. This is verse 9. Keep in mind everything I've just told you today, but you listen to, because I know some of y'all is like, man, this is like, this is depressing, Brother Ricky. This is gloom and doom. Here's your redemptive hope. Ready? Number one, God always has a remnant that he spares. I said God always has a remnant that he spares. Look at this, verse nine. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. The bad news is there's coming the great tribulation. The good news is that if your name is found in the Lamb's book of life and you have a covenant with God, you're walking in covenant with God, you're born again under the blood of Jesus, I believe, listen, you can debate me, you can get mad at me, you can write me off, or you can unfollow me, but I'm just going to tell you what this preacher believes. I believe that, again, God is a God of patterns, cycles, types, and shadows, and I believe just as there was a remnant that walked with God, knew God, had a relationship with God, just like Abraham, and God says, I will not hide this thing. And Every righteous man and woman of God, go back and read in the old covenant, they were delivered 
before the wrath of God came. They didn't endure the wrath. They were delivered from the wrath. Abraham was delivered. Lot was delivered. Noah was delivered. Everybody, you can go through this and we can just read this and read this and read this and read. God has a remnant and he knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. So here's what I want to pray today. First of all, listen, this doesn't apply for everyone because if, listen, if you're not born again, you're not in covenant with God, you're not under the blood of Jesus, then my friends, it could be bad news for you. So here's what we here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray for you and I'm praying that you get right with God today. So that watch this. If the Lord comes back tomorrow or 30 years from now, we want you to continually walking in covenant with him so that that day does not come upon you unexpectedly right? Are you hearing me? So here's what we're going to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every individual today under the sound of my voice. For those that are away from God, those that are not in covenant with God, we pray that the Holy Spirit, Lord, I have specifically spoken today that the Holy Spirit is still active today. He's still working through people today. I pray that you would reveal yourself today. Lord, begin to touch people's lives, even live now, watching this or by the rebroadcast of this. I pray that they would feel your presence come upon them right there in that room, right there in that car, right there in that office, right there in that kitchen, right where they're at, that they would feel the tangible presence of God that's coming upon them, that your, your heart is beating faster, you're sweating your hands are getting sweaty and the reason why that is is because it's the conviction of god god is pulling at your heartstrings and he's telling you to repent he's telling you to turn to him and put your faith and your trust in jesus christ and the bible says if you will do that today then your name will be put in the lamb's book of life and you will enter into a covenant with him and listen but it doesn't stop there Get your Bible, begin to read your Bible, get plugged into a local body of Christ, a local church in your area. If you do not have one, we welcome you to the family right here. I promise you that I will do everything I can in my power and, and the wisdom that God has given me and the instructions and the call that God has placed on my life to help you, to equip you, to inform you, and to, to keep the oil in your lamp so that when the day that the bridegroom shows up, you will be watching and you will be ready to enter into the bridegroom chamber and you will hear well done good and faithful servant enter into thy riches so that's what we pray for you today and i pray that you would be obedient to that today and that you would receive this today and walk in this today in jesus mighty name and all god's people said amen and amen listen guys Again, I appreciate you so much for taking the time today to hop on here, being a part of our broadcast. Again, if you've not yet subscribed to our uh, website, please do that. Again, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. You're going to see a place where it says subscribe. You can get one daily digest. The, the even better thing to do is download our free app. If you have an Apple, you have an Android, it is free. Go to the Apple store, go to the Android store, download that free app to keep up with all of our headlines and to keep up with our podcast. Don't forget to hit yes on push notifications and you will be alerted right there at the palm of your hands. And as always, guys, we want to give you the opportunity if this ministry is a continual source of blessing to you and your family in all, in all kinds of ways, information, revelation, equipping, encouragement, Whatever the case would be or all the above, we want to give you that opportunity to partner with us. Pray about becoming a monthly partner. Pray about uh, helping any way you can. Because again, our message, we don't charge people anything. We don't charge you for the app. We don't charge you for the subscription base. We don't charge you for messages. We don't sell products. We don't sell books. We don't sell CDs, DVDs, or any of that. All we do, we feed the sheep and we ask as you've been blessed and as you receive, that you would sow back into the ministry to help us continue to remain strong and active today and continue to do that. So listen, you can do that two different ways. The, the easiest way is go to the app and go down to the bottom, click on donate, 
and give electronically. Uh, you can do that or go to the main website and do that. Or you can give by check or money order. If you're watching this, it's right there on the screen. If you're listening, it's make it out to End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391. And that is Monroe, Georgia, 30655. As always, God bless you. Thank you. If you're watching my YouTube, watch my Rumble. Don't forget to hit the bell for to be notified of new broadcasts. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're listening by Apple or Spotify, don't forget to share this podcast with others. And if, of course, if you're listening today, we are all over the place. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on uh, we're on Rumble, we're on Parlor, we're on Getter, G E T T R, we're on. Uh, the truth or whatever it is, that new Trump network. We're all over the place, guys. We're on MeWe. Um, we're all over the place. We're on Telegram. Just look for us, search for us, and you will find us. If you, The easiest way is go to the main website, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. If you go up to the bottom or up at the top, rather, in the menu, it'll say follow us, and it's going to give you all the places to follow us on whatever social media outlet you're on. So you can go there follow us on all of them so you can keep make sure that you keep up with this uh as always so we love you guys we're going to sign off for today we'll be off tomorrow we will not be on here for our wednesday uh typical broadcast on wednesdays we don't we don't normally broadcast on wednesdays but we'll be back lord willing on thursday with uh, another message or an update depending we'll just see how that plays out but until then may the lord bless you keep you and may his countenance be upon you in jesus name god bless you guys thank you for listening to the end time headlines podcast we pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message for more information about how you can help partner with our ministry please visit endtimeheadlines.org